Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to 91.1 WRMU. We are just minutes away from kickoff at Mount Union Stadium, but beforehand, we're talking with Cole Parrish and Matt Fitchett. Guys, how are we doing today? Great. Good. How are you? Doing pretty good, guys. Uh, so first, to jump things off, Matt and Cole, uh, you know, you guys recently went three games straight, not giving up a, a sack on the offensive end, uh, Heidelberg, Capital, and Wilmington. On the season, you know, the offense has only given up 10 sacks. Uh, Cole, let's start with you on this one. Do you take great pride in this stat, or is it just taking care of business? Uh, to me, it's just kind of like taking care of business. It's kind of like our job. Uh, when I saw that, when I saw that we had given up 10 sacks, I was kinda, actually kind of kind of mad about that. I wasn't uh, not really happy about that, but it's just taking care of business and getting our job done. Matt? Kind of the same thing Cole said. I mean, it's our job to protect the quarterback and to give him time to throw the ball and make the reads he needs to, so more like it's our job not like pride so uh colt you know last season you started as the right guard uh now you start at the center position can you discuss a little bit of that transition from being a guard to now the center yeah um it was definitely a mental more of a mental aspect than a physical um being center you have to make all the calls read the entire defense see kind of what everybody else sees and sometimes even make calls for other guys which was fun and which makes the game more fun and it makes it more where I have to think more than actually more physical than what it was last year but it's it's been a it's been a fun transition mm-hmm. I love it uh Matt you know you've been starting at the right tackle position for some time now uh discuss that strategy playing that position uh, I think the biggest thing is being able to read your keys you're the end man on the line of the scrimmage so there's going to be times where you got to let the center know like there's they're planning on blitzing on that right side or if you're at left tackle on that left side so that changes our scheme in the run game sometimes and changes our pass uh, blocking. So as long as I'm communicating with him, that's key being a tackle. And just like little things, stance, start, and effort to play in that position, and you'll be all right. You know, guys, uh, so far this season, I mean, you've definitely seen some all OACD linemen, so a couple of linebackers here and there. Uh, Cole, with you on this one, um, you know, what is it like trying to pick up on those blitzes and anything with their all OAC? How do you compete against that? Um, that's one of those things you kind of got to just put in the back of your head. These are some some of these guys are real tough, real good. Some guys be all Americans. I could see in the future, and um, and sometimes when it's coming, it's kind of hectic and it's coming kind of fast. But you got to be able to like calm yourself down and just work on what you've been working on in practice. See with their keys. Sometimes they cheat. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they can give it away. Um, just kind of having that that whole unit on the O line all is one. I mean, we kind of pick it up at the same time. We're all on the same page, which makes it a lot easier to pick up. And, Matt, for you, you know, you play on that outside edge, and a lot you get those outside rushers, whether it's a defensive end or that outside linebacker. How do you pick up on those reads? Uh, a lot of it's just kind of film, too. Like, in preparation and practice, we go over everything that we could possibly see in practice. So it's kind of second nature when you get into the game. And, I mean, the biggest thing at tackle is just kind of staying patient. Like, a lot of times they're a little bit smaller than you if they're, like, the linebackers and stuff blitzing. So as long as you stay patient and just kind of let them come to you, you'll be all right. Awesome. And, you know, Cole, we look at you. You know, you're from North Carolina. Um, I always like it how, you know, out-of-state guys kind of find Mount Union. So what's your story? How would you find the Purple Raiders as home? I love this place. Um, so me and my dad – uh, when it got to about championship time of the year, we would sit down and watch all the championship games together from D3, D2, and then all the D1 bowl games, kind of call it championship weekend, and we would pick our team. So when I was little, I picked Mount Union. He would either pick Whitewater or whoever, and we kind of stayed consistent like that, and we would kind of like you know talk a little smack to each other and just have someone to <laughs> cheer for. And uh, when it got time for recruiting, uh, I had a recruiting profile with NSA or NCSA, and um, – I, my dad was just like, why don't we just send it there and just see what happens? So I sent it, and uh, about an hour and a half later, I got a call back, which was really fast. He was like, come check it out. My dad was like, let's just let's just find out. And I got here, man, I just fell in love. just love this place. Awesome. And, you know, man, Cole, you know, you've been a part of the top offense in the nation. I mean, it has been a well-oiled machine so far this season. You guys are 8-0 heading in to the last two regular seasons. Uh, Matt, for you, what has worked so well this season for you guys? I think this year we've just kind of – 
found ourselves as a team and as a unit on the offense. Like we know our strengths and we know we can stick to them. But we also have a run and pass game that has been really working well this year. And I think it's really hard for defenses when you're two dimensional and not just one dimensional on the offense. So I feel like that's really helped us this year. Cool for you. Um, I think we gel more as a family this year. It's it's really tight. And I mean, last year's group, Cal, we were tight. But this year, it's kind of like, I don't know, I could see it more like we're just gelling. And like those are like my little brothers out there, like Jay Hill and Ruth mm-hmm. and all them and D'Angelo in the backfield and got Josh Petroselli as a freshman. I mean, they're all like my, my boys, you know what I mean? They, they listen, we all listen to each other. We take what everybody has to say and we just we just do our thing. Yeah, that's been the biggest thing I, I've looked at this season, from seeing you guys last year to grow into this year. You know, the biggest thing was is just kind of growing as a team. And you guys right. have definitely come a long way in doing that. And as you mentioned, it's definitely become a, a family right. type of nature, and that's what's uh-huh. been so successful uh, right. going out. So, guys, let's get into kind of the awards for both of you guys. You know, for offensive linemen, it's kind of weird to hear your name for awards. You know, right. when you do – when you, the only time you <laughs> right, hear your right. name is if you get, a you know, a flag called on you. Messed up, right? Yeah, but, messed but, up. <laughs> but, hey, you know, these are, are good awards. Matt, you know, we look at you from last season, a couple awards, academic awards, you know, all OAC um, – uh, with the academics, college sports information directors of America, all district and all American second team. And then you also have on the football field, all OAC honorable mention. What do these uh, honors mean to you? I mean, yeah, they're a great honor to me and it was a really cool experience to get them. I never thought that I would be receiving some of the awards I did, but I'm not really necessarily worried about the awards that are individual. I'm more worried about our team. And like, we always talk about our two main goals and that's to win a conference championship and to win a national title, and that's mainly what my focus was. So, yeah, it was really cool, and it was a great experience and honor to win those awards, but I'm more worried about my team and my boys to get those two goals. So, And, you know, Cole, we look at you last season as the right guard. You were all OAC second team. This season, you come in, you were named captain. What did that honor mean for you? Um, the all OAC thing was pretty cool. I mean, that's just one of those things that you get for being a player, a part mm-hmm. of a, a part of a program, but – the captain thing meant a lot, man. That's the highest honor I think I can receive here at Mount Union. You know what I mean? To be a captain and have all your your brothers pick you to be their leader. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was just like that was just outstanding. I couldn't I couldn't think of a higher honor in this at this program or at anywhere to be named captain. Yeah, definitely. All you guys, not only on the captain side, but as a team. I mean, it looks like everybody has been accountable and leadership yeah. has just been all there so far this season. Uh, so, uh, man, Cole, you know, with the combo backs, you know, we've already talked about the freshman back and Petroselli. <laughs> yeah. uh, you also have Jawan's Evans Morris back there. Uh, Cole, let's start with you on this one. What is the strategy for you guys when you're blocking for these type of players? Man, these guys are so explosive, man. It's unreal. Um, I didn't think – I thought Wands was going to be our number one. He's just going to be our guy. He gets the ball all the time. Mm-hmm. And to see this freshman kid come in and just do these crazy things, um, it really for us as an O-line is, is just to block our guys and get on them. You get on the, the front the front four, three or four, and then you get those linebackers taken care of and you let those guys work. I mean, they're usually matched up one-on-one with a safety or a corner, and they do some outstanding things that we've seen before. I mean, but for us as an O-line, man, we just got to get vertical and downhill and get on our guys. I mean, that's just easy as that. Matt, for you, I mean, you know, you see these these guys, and as Cole mentioned, explosive. I mean, they're uh, pretty shifty backs. How do you block for those guys? I mean, it's just a lot of fun, honestly, because even if you don't get that perfect block or dial it up right to block for them, and they just need that little hole, and they're there for you. So, I mean, that's what I think is really cool is, like, sometimes as a unit, I mean, we're not always 100%, and, like, right. just to make – even a minor mistake, and then they make you right anyway. Right. It's really cool to block from that way. So, guys, we you know we talk about the the running backs back uh, in the backfield, but we also have to talk about a shifty quarterback, D'Angelo. Um, you know, I think one great example of uh, you know how great this line has been came from the Wilmington game. I mean, uh, D'Angelo had trouble with the snap, and you know it was like he had all day in the pocket. I mean, he was able to not only repossess the ball, but he had time to find his targets downfield. Um, so, guys, uh, Matt, we'll start with you on this one. Um, you know, just kind of discuss the ability, kind of blocking for D'Angelo and giving him all day in the pocket to find his targets. I mean, again, it's just us reading our keys in the defense in that blocking standpoint. But it also helps that he's a mobile quarterback mm-hmm. and he's really confident and, like, he knows his keys going into the game. But And with him being able to move around in the pocket, too, it kind of helps us. Like, if we do miss a blitz or a pickup like that, he can move around and – I mean, it just makes you fight harder for him, too, knowing that he can make the plays that he does. And Cole, for you, I mean, you're you're snapping him the ball, and, and for a guy that's been so elusive this season and 
been precise with the uh, the passing. It starts with that offensive line. You guys have been ni- doing a nice job. You know, what's the strategy giving them so much time in the pocket? Um, those snaps, like you mentioned, they've been a little everywhere this season. <laughs> uh, I'm working on those, but uh, he makes me right. Uh, he makes us as an O-line right, if that makes sense. He makes us, if we mess up, he makes it right by scrambling, by taking off. He's got that ability to, to lengthen the play by using his legs. Um, man, it's, it's, it's also – it's almost easy to block for a guy like that. You know what I mean? You just you lock onto your guy, you do your job, and you let him just stand back there and be the guy he is. You know what I mean? The guy's got. You look at his stats, man. They're kind of they're kind of out there. They're crazy, mm-hmm. and um, it's almost kind of easy to block for somebody like that that can just help you as much as you help him. Yeah, I mean, in in the sense that you know D'Angelo gets rid of the ball quick in, in yeah. the backfield he's not really playing around all the day but it's good to have that security key where if he can't find a guy downfield at least he has that line to block for him if his reads aren't you know when he's going through the progressions if his first read or second read's not there you know that he can tuck and run he's got the ability to get you some yardage no matter what um, so guys I mean there's been incredible linemen that have uh, played here at the university um, Cole, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, through your time playing football here at Mount Union, uh, you know, has there been any player, former or present, uh, that you look to towards as a mentor to help your game? Um, yeah, when I first got here, it was uh, Pat Mahoney. It seemed like he could do nothing wrong, you know what I mean? He, he was good technique-wise all the way down, and I tried to kind of mimic him as a right guard, and then when I started playing a little center and looking, it was Mitch. I mean, Mitch was mm-hmm. so good. I mean, he's a top D3 center of the year yeah. twice, I mean, mm-hmm. twice in a row. I mean, that's the one of the great greatest guys to look up to, and I started looking at him at a physical side of, like, he does this, and he puts his hands here, and he gets his feet there. But also as a mental side, he sees this. You know what I mean? He's able to read this. He can see the whole defense just by sitting there for two seconds. And that was kind of um, – that was really nice for me as a young guy to come in and just have that mentor to watch and for him to even coach me up sometimes. It was nice. And, you know, Matt, same question to you. Uh, any player that you look towards uh, past or present that really helped your game as a mentor? I would probably say Alex Goff and Antonio Tate. Well, when I came in as a freshman – Antonio Tate was actually my RA, so I always got to kind of talk to him and catch him, and Mm -hmm. he'd kind of give me some advice here and there. And watching past games of when he played was phenomenal, his, like, technique and his killer instinct. And Alex Goff was the starting right tackle when I came in as a freshman. Real big dude. He kind of came from a small school like I did and just a really hard worker, and he kind of just helped mold me into being a really hard worker Mm -hmm. and learning the ways of Mountain Union football. Awesome, guys. And uh, so we, we look towards today's matchup here. Uh, against uh, Muskingum. Uh, right now, the Fighting Muskies are on a th- three game losing streak. They're pretty hungry for a win. They're 1 and 7 coming in. Uh, Cole, discuss the game plan for today's matchup. Um, 1 and 7 doesn't do these guys justice. These guys are pretty good. Um, the game plan is just to go out there and do what we usually do. I mean, it's always to dominate the field uh, offensively in the run game and the pass game to have both those options wide open. Um, so it's no different going into this week as it is any other week. And Matt, for you. I'd say similar to what Cole said, like the one and seven record doesn't do them justice. They have some flashes and they got some players that can make some plays, but we just need to go out there and game plan like we always do each week and just uh, do our assignments. All right, guys, last question for you. Matt, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, we're very close to playoff time, just a couple weeks uh, away. Uh, what will it take for the Purple Raiders to be back on top and be Stag Bowl champions? I think it's just getting back to the little things, like the little things add up to big things. Know your assignment. Go in there knowing your opponent. Even, like, for an offensive line standpoint, like, you have that D end across from you. Each week in the playoffs, they get better and better. And you need to find the little flaws that they have that you can kind of take them advantage of in the playoffs. And being a family, too, and just getting the job done would, I think, give us a great chance to get back to the stag bowl. Cole, for you. Just like he said, man, it's, uh, it's all about dedication and focus. As we get later in the season, I mean, guys start to, you know what I mean, get out of there a little mentally, start to miss home a little bit, especially the young guys. But it's, it's all about staying focused and having that one – that's the one goal we got to get to is the championship, and that's, that's what we want to do. That's the plan. The one goal for the Purple Raiders, trying to get back to the Stag Bowl here this season. So far, so good. 8-0, getting ready to take on the Fighting Muskies at Mount Union Stadium. Keep it locked in here on 91.1 WRMU. When we get back, we will have coverage between the Fighting Muskies and the Purple Raiders.